All right, good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Can you guys hear me? Good. All right, well, welcome. Happy, uh, happy Monday and all of that stuff. <clears throat> so today we're going to talk about whether it is actually realistically possible to make money in Forex. It's going to be a brief discussion, and then we're going to um, we'll look at some charts and, and we'll talk about some hypothetical scenarios for the coming weeks and months. How's that sound? Good? So, so some of the richest people or some of the most successful traders in the world, Buffett started as a trader, Dennis Gartman started as a currency trader, George Soros was a currency trader. Um, Bruce Kovner was a currency trader. There's a lot of very successful currency traders in the world. Okay? Very successful. So, is it possible to make money as a currency trader? Yes. All right? But I will say this. As a retail currency trader, and this is not going to be, this may not be popular today, and never, I'm never one to be, uh, remotely defeatist in my attitude, right? I would never discourage anybody from getting into trading. I would never discourage anybody from pursuing a dream, pursuing a goal. That's ridiculous, right? And guys, always the more, the more, um, the more participation, the better, okay? So if you, if you feel chatty today, by all means, chat, okay? So, <clears throat> However, I think that the I think that the approach or the level of expectation from a retail standpoint is a little bit skewed, and that's really what I want to address today. All right. So, if you have seven thousand dollars, I'm using this as a random number. Heck, if you have five thousand dollars, that is your little bucket to trade, and you are going to make your family and your friends' dreams come true with this five grand. You're not going to do it. It's that simple. It ain't going to happen. All right. And, um, and if it does, I think you've beaten very, very long odds. Very long odds. You have been the one success, you've been the one exception to the rule, I would say. All right. But if that's you, it probably ain't going to happen. Okay. And I'll tell you why. All right. Because here's, here's inevitably, here's inevitably how this works. All right. And tell me if anybody, I'll try and find a, try and find a decent piece of paper that we can work with here. All right. Because here's inevitably what works. What happens? And it was just, it was funny because I was, I was chatting to, um, I was chatting to somebody over the weekend and they had recently, been certified as a psychologist, right? And no, I wasn't going to see one, but I just so happened to meet this person and they just so happened to be recently qualified. I didn't seek them out as such. All right? And they asked me, this person asked me, she said, well, what is the... So tell me about trading. And I was, and obviously the, it was... Um, she wanted to know about the psychology of trading. So I, I told her the following. I was like, the interesting thing about trading is that your mind gets gets twisted whether you're winning or losing. All right. And, and what's interesting is her instinctive answer to this. Okay. Because I said, when you're winning, you're nervous of your success. All right. And this is often a trait of the guys that become really successful and those that don't. All right, because when you're winning, you, um, <clears throat> yes, Annette, I'll talk about that, sure. Yep. Um, we'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll remember that question and come back to it in a few minutes if that's okay. <clears throat> so I told this person, when you're winning, you want to protect your profits, right? Because it's such a grind to find profit. When you have profit, instead of trading more, which is what one should be doing, one tends to trade slower 
and less because you don't want to give money back to the market. And when you're trading poorly, one tends to fall into a little bit of a gambler's mentality of, I want to get this back, I want to trade more. Where in fact, it should be the exact opposite. When you're trading poorly, you should trade smaller and trade less. When you're trading very well, you should trade more frequently and you should trade larger, if anything, more aggressively. All right? And the the thing about this is that when you, and I've said this before, it's just a worthwhile discussion, is that let's say that over a six-month period, you develop a trading strategy that gives you 50% success. Okay? So you know but if you plug in these scenarios into the market, 50% of the time you're going to be successful. All right. However, the order of that success is indiscriminate. Okay. So, for example, this. Let's and 50% success should be enough for you to make money. All right. So two to one risk. Blah 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 blah. All right. It should be okay. <clears throat> okay. So let's say that. Um, and I'm using this as a round number. I'm not using this, um, uh, you know, I'm not using this as an absolute. So just humor me here for a minute. Okay. But now let's say you have a, str- a string of trades that's 10 winners. All right. You might go win, win, loss, 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 win, win, loss, loss, win. Okay. And the next string of trades, you go loss, win, 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 loss, 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 win. Okay? Both of them, both of them are 50% winners. However, the order in which the winning happens is completely, is completely random. Okay? However, the success of it is consistently you know, you're getting a consistent set of inconsistent results. All right. Now, to be able to continue to trade in this fashion, you have to develop a sense of psychology. So this person immediately, when I demonstrated this, she didn't hesitate in saying that must take years to develop that sort of that sort of fortitude. I didn't bait her. That's what she said. And I was like, you're absolutely right. It takes years. Right, and this was somebody that was now a prof- young professional, but still a professional, and this is what they said. So my thing is, is that ninety nine percent, ninety five percent of of the folks that I meet that are trying to hand at trading don't understand this, or that level of expectation, that level of expectation is skewed. All right. So the first thing to think about is. Addressing one's level of expectation. Okay, and everybody, I mean, I'm like everybody else. You fancy yourself, right? I mean, you wouldn't be in this if you didn't back yourself to get it right. Okay, and like I said to you, I'm not, I'm not throwing a defeatist attitude at you by any stretch. I'm just saying that it, it takes a very long time to develop the mental head of this. Okay. All right, now, the other thing to think about is this. Let's say you have, okay, so I guess what I'm saying is, I guess what I'm saying here, guys, is if you think, and now everybody has different living expenses, different ways of life, different expectations on money, but if you think that you are going to, if you think that you are going to resign your job and start trading for a living for 20 grand, you've taken leave of your senses. Keep your job. And if you have, you know, and if you are recently retired or you, and like I said, this is coming out very defeated and it doesn't mean, I guess I'm giving a dose of reality. To think. If you are recently laid off or recently retired or you have 
closed your business and you have a little you have a little batch of money, I'm saying little, like less than a hundred grand, and you're gonna learn to trade and trade on this for a living, go find another job. Okay. You're gonna need some subsidiary income. And that's not because it's not necessarily because you can't do it. It's because you're gonna this and I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a professional, but this ability to have to learn the mental fortitude for the game is something that you're gonna cripple if you're worried about money all the time. You're not gonna be able to do it, I don't think. You might, yeah, you might like I said, there's always an exception to the rule. But re- realistically, you need to go get another job. You need to be able to put food on the table comfortably and trade around that as a retailer. Okay? Well, I think when you can make – it's a good question. So the, I'll wrap that up into what's an account size that's big enough? I think that – I mean, and like I said, that's it's a moving target, it's a moving target Sanjay, because – if you, you know, there's some folks that tell me, I can live on $4,000 a month. And then there's other folks that say, I cannot live on less than quarter million dollars a month. Well, obviously, those two levels are going to be different, right? So if you, you know, my thing is you need to prove to yourself for six months that you can earn more than what you're currently making or what you currently need for a six-month period, and then you can investigate it. You know, so what is the right account size? That's going to depend largely on how you trade and your level of success. But I I just don't, I mean, if you live in California where, you know, to buy a reasonable home is $450,000, you know, you need to, you have to be making 150, 200,000 just to live. So if you think you're going to do that on a 50 grand account, you've taken complete and utter leave of your senses. I don't even think, I don't know, not demo trade. It means you have to trade your live account to the point where you can basically match what you're making initially. And you need to be able to do it comfortably and through multiple conditions. Because if you can make between two and four percent, like for me, if you can do two to five percent a month, you've done exceptional, exceptionally. And I'm, I'm trying to err on the side of low here because just it's a grind. It's an absolute grind. You've got to remember that Forex is very cyclical in the way, and I'm not talking about seasonably cyclical. I'm talking about just you're going to have some periods where market trades easier than others. So minimum capital, again, Boyke, boils down to what you need to live on. But I would say, I would say at minimum, at minimum you need, at minimum, to live on a couple hundred grand at least. If you want to live on a couple hundred grand. Right now, everybody's going, what? Now, to trade with, now to trade with and try to grow, 25 grand. I think that's reasonable. Dollars. To trade with and try to grow and, and do something with, 25 grand. But if you... But if you want to do it for a living, quarter million and above. <laughs> Thank you. In Zimbabwean dollars, a whole, a whole big amount. And got, I, I, this pro, a lot of you are probably going, this dude is taking, this guy's ridiculous. So three million rand. I mean, you know, here's a classic example, right? Pound has essentially been in a range now for four, three months, four months. So what I'm what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, is that 
<clears throat> you got to you got to trade through multiple conditions. You got to be able to trade through trending conditions. You got to be able to trade through stagnant, no volatility conditions. You got to be able to trade through a bullish market, a bearish market, and you got to know that you can make money. You got to know that you can make money in these array of condition, market conditions and support yourself comfortably before you quit your job. However long that takes. It takes a year, two years, then so be it. Yes, it takes a wide array of skill sets. Or said differently, you should be able to know that you can trade water for as long as it takes in the rangy times for when you hit the trend and know how to identify the trend quickly and then make a year's worth of money in the two-month trend. Which is the kind of nature of Forex. You trade water, you trade water, you trade water, windfall. So, bottom line is, and this is not a popular webinar. Epic Street's probably like, keep quiet, Pegler. You always say silly things. What are you know? So, guys, don't. Quit the day job. Okay? Because he has also a reason. If you can make, you can make, it just depends if you can make 3, 2 to 5% a month, you're doing very good things. Yeah, thank you, Dave. <laughs> Alright, so let me give you another example of what happens. Okay? And this is the scenario that you've got to guard against. And David's heard it before, so. Apologize if you bored there, Dave. That's it. Got to have it, unless you know if you have if you have a million and a half to trade with, and you can literally wait out the market, and you can literally wait out the market, and you're living comfortably, you're in good shape. All right. So here's inevitably what happens. You are, you've traded your demo account for six months or whatever. Um, you've traded your demo account for six months or whatever. You're feeling pretty good about it, so you go live. Okay? And you go live with 2,000. David's heard me talk about this many times. You go live with two grand. For some reason, you've thought that you can parlay this two grand into your wildest dreams. You're seeing yourself with bikinied, scaly clad women on a yacht in a year. Big yacht. French Riviera. Awesome. Brilliant. All right? This level of expectation may need to be tempered. Okay? So here's inevitably what happens. Week one, week two, week three, week four. All right, so week one. We talk about two grand here, guys. I mean, two grand? Like, you know, a little road trip here, a few clothes there, a couple of bills. Two grand's gone. It is nothing, right, in this day and age. Nothing. But for some reason, we've held it. This two grand is now held in such high regard, it's ridiculous because it's, it, it's more than that. This two grand represents the sum of the work you've done for six months to a year. It represents your ego. It represents your level of success or aptitude as a trader. It no longer represents just two grand for some reason, which it needs to. Okay, so here we go. You plan your first trade, and it is a masterpiece. And you make 30 pips out of this. You're going to trade one mini lot. One. The dollar a pip here. First trade, 30 pips. It's a masterpiece. You spend hours faffing over this trade. It's your Fabergé freaking egg. Thank you, David. Right? Next trade, 20 pips. Same thing. You plan it. You strategize all over it. Brilliant. Okay, so day one, so these are days, not weeks. Brilliant, right? Then a break-even trade, yeah, okay. 
whatever. Bottom line is, for that day, you make 50 pips. Awesome. Next day comes along, and but you make 50 pips, and it takes eight hours. Time? Time involved, eight hours. Which, <clears throat> if you work this out, comes out to be four dollars an hour. Minimum wage in California. Uh, no, guys, I'm not uh, not coaching at the and don't intend to. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, six. With taxes, with taxes, well, yeah, we'll call it six. With taxes, close to four. All right, so six bucks. Minimum wage in California, eight twenty-five to make it at McDonald's. All right. So what you're saying is you're earning twenty-five percent below minimum wage. Sound check. Sound, one, two, three. Okay. And forex scale, I don't mean to be, I don't mean to be this negative at all. I think I may have erred on the side of too negative, and I didn't mean to. So don't, like I'm saying to you, I'm not saying to you, don't pursue. I'm not trying to be the big downer here because I'm not that type of guy, at all. I'm just trying to bring some semblance of sort of reality to things. So depressed, I'm just gonna go cut myself. 825 minimum wage in California. Okay. Day two. Come along. And come along and you do the same thing. You think great, right? First trade, 40 perps. And next trade you go break even, break even. I don't know, small loss. Or we'll go three break evens, yeah. Some of the day, 40 perps. Five, eight hours again, five bucks an hour. Okay, day three comes along. Now, <clears throat> you've earned 90 pips. So day three comes along, and your first trade, you make 10 pips. So immediately here, you actually have, you know, the running total is you have 100 pips so far in three days. Okay, so you have 100 bucks on your two grand. So you've made 5% grinding in the market in three days. Pretty freaking amazing, right? But it doesn't feel amazing because you've invested 16 hours. Let's say with this 10 pips, you've invested, I don't know, 20 hours. You're cruising along at a hot five bucks an hour. You're like, this isn't what dreams are made of. This is very tiring. Anyway, you don't necessarily acknowledge it yet. Okay, but this is what you should be focusing on this. But one just, but it tends to become trivial because of the grind. Okay, so. Then what happens is the next trade comes along and you happen to lose 30 pips. You planned it well, but you lost 30 pips. Okay? And then the next trade comes along and you lose 20. All right? And that ends your day. All right? So you're down, you're down 40 pips at the end of the day. All right, and then the next day comes along. All right, so so far, you know, up 100 minus 40, you're still up 60 pips running total. The next day comes along. All right, but this takes you eight hours, and you worked for, you know, negative five bucks an hour. Yeah. You gave the market money that day. 
Right, next day comes along, and the first trade out the box is a minus 20. And I'm just using this as a random situation. Right, and what happens now is you go, well, hang on a freaking minute. Are you telling me that I've worked all week and my account is now sitting at $2,041? And now you go, now you go, you know what, I'm going to up this and try to get this handled. So you double it, you double your lot size. And you go, break even. Go winner of say 15 pips, so we'll give it 30 pips. And then all of a sudden you go minus 40 on the next trade. Okay, so minus 20 in real terms, plus 30. All right, so plus 10, and then minus 40, which is actually a minus 80 because you doubled it. All right, and things are not looking so good. Things are not looking so dandy. All right, so minus 80, minus 100. This is a minus 70 day. Okay, and all of a sudden, yeah, you enter the negative in your account. And then day five comes along, and the first negative trade at double the lot size puts you, puts your account at 18,960, 18,000. One thousand eight hundred and sixty two dollars. Okay. What's well, it's not an unrec and in six weeks time you're depositing more money into a two grand account. Okay. And really the money side of it has the money side of it's almost immaterial because it's just it, it's significant but it's not the end of the world. Okay, what's the end of the world? What's the end of the world? I'm afraid is that you've lost sight of what was making you successful. Okay, and you're blaming stuff, and you and you're beating yourself. Like I said to you, this two grand represents more than just two thousand. Represents your represents your ego as a trait, as a human being, for some reason. Right, this weight has been put on yourself because of the effort that it takes. All right, and you had the process down. This is making you money. The thing is, is that the thing is, is that it's very easy to slip away from that, and it takes. Um, sure, thank you. And it takes a long time to be able to. Get stuck into this mold of this mold of what's making you successful. Well, it's it's the ability to identify when one is on the slippery slope to this side. Because once you get locked into this, it takes a long time, but you can do it. But that's what I'm saying. If you're trying to do that, if you're trying to do that while trying to make a living. You're mad. Forex girls going, oh, Pegler. It's a lost. We had a good relationship until now. Yeah, we can do that. We can do the poll now if that's cool. Thank you. Is it just going to be a little poll coming out just the, out of interest, just trying to find out? If you, you know, how long it's taken everybody to put it all together. Well, this is the thing, Bubba. This is the thing, mate, is that <clears throat> it's – and and what you – I mean, you're echoing basically what I'm saying. This is a poll, Dave. 
So my point is, my point is, it can be done. My point is, it can be done. But if you're doing it while trying to forge a living in the world, I don't think you're giving yourself the best opportunity to be successful. That's what I'm getting at. And, you know, while, because of the market changes, all right, so if you, I, I have had very little success just rank spot trading at the moment. Like as in sit down at London Open and go, I want it long or I want it short. I think uh, I think it'll be I think the poll results will be out in a minute. Well, I've I've been lucky enough I've been lucky enough that I've had subsidiary incomes while I've been trading, so it's helped. But don't think I mean I still go through my bad months and my good months and it's a grind. I've been grinding the last six months. All right, but I've identified that. The market is very quiet right now, and I've gone from just rank technicals to probably 80% fundamental. I've been long the dollar for some time. It hasn't looked very smart. It hasn't looked very smart. I've had periods where it's been nice, but it, it's been I've been looking like an idiot quite a lot. But what I've been doing is placing trades in the market and literally waiting. Come in every day and go, oh, how, is the dollar strong today? No. Go and watch The Office on TV. Right. So when the volatility picks up and we're averaging, you know, 150 pips a day on the euro, 180 on the pound, great. Then we can go spot trading again. Or when things, when something fundamentally changes and we actually have a real strong versus weak scenario, great. Now we can think about a different sort of strategy. But I think that folks are very – people are inflexible to um, – um, you know, I think that one has to be – one has to be okay to the change abilities. Of, you have to be able to roll with what the market gives you, and that requires money. There you go, guys. So, <clears throat> average answer you have more than a year, and then the next best is that a lot of folks have had a hard time just putting it all together. Kiwi forever is not helping. You know, you've got uh, Europeans cutting rates, but cutting rates from what half a percent to 0.25. You know, thank you for the uh, thank you for your submissions, there, guys. I appreciate that. You know, and this is a nice testament to, hey, it takes a while to find success if you're going to find it. Okay. So I hope I didn't buzzkill everybody's mood on that. And I missed the question up there. Let me scroll up a little bit. So the, the you're very roundabout very roundabout way of saying that is don't give up the day job. Um, Simon, good question. Simon's question is, well, I leave in the morning and just set trades, and is there a way to know if volatility is going to be decent that day? A lot of it nowadays is news. I don't even know if news driven isn't the right word, but it needs it, it needs news to kick it up the butt because it there's nothing else going on really. So an eventful news calendar will generally translate to a a lively day. Um, um, to be consistent, two years. And even now, I, you know, I say even now, that doesn't, it sounds egotistical, but I mean, there's still periods where it's a grind. Yeah. 
you know, so I would watch the calendar for that. And also there's a level of, um, there's a level of respect, um, or respect. There's a, um, you will learn what looks good, um, through experience. So I can, I can look at a chart for the day and figure out, hey, is this going to be a decent session or not? And that's largely depending on, you know, how the four hour and daily is set up, you know, Today I, I looked at the I looked at the euro and I thought mm, not such a great day and I mean it's it's cruised up there but 50 60 pips you know everything else has essentially been range bound. Yeah, so guys, the market is very very tight right now. It just is. I'll show you. I mean I've shown you this before. Um. Managing losses? No. Providing you manage your winners with equal pomp and circumstance, that's what counts too. There you go. Yeah. Equities has been the way to go, isn't it? I haven't heard the uh, latest buzz of COT. The thing with the COT report is it's a little bit... I mean, COT, it's like anything is um, if the COT is your thing and you a lot of a lot of trading is the feeling it gives you right so I'll give you a, I'll give you a random example okay <clears throat> I recently bought some new gold irons okay and I tried out some ping irons I tried out some Mizuno irons I tried out some, I tr it does lag, yes. I tried out some Nike irons, okay? And the Mizuno irons, they had like, they had like a frosted sort of, a frosted chrome look on them. The ping irons are like a, um, <clears throat> or like a bronze sort of look. And the Nike irons had a very shiny, had a very shiny chrome look, right? Lots of bling. And I had all three, and the numbers on TrackMan are all the same. All right, very similar spin rates, blah, 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 blah. All right. But the Nike irons, because when I looked down at them, made them feel good in my hand, those are the ones, those are the ones that I chose to purchase because I felt good looking at them. Right? Nothing to do with their performance. All right, and I feel like the COT and other news sort of related things and data related data related instruments do the same thing. All right, so to me, when you look at a dollar index chart, right, you know, here one is, you know, do I need, um, do I need? There you go, right? Do I need to look at this chart to know? Hey, this looks up to me. It's a weekly chart. You know, this looks up to me, but I can tell that it's coming off real resistance. We're probably going to need to come at least down to here and then, you know, potentially do something like this before it really figures it itself out. So, in other words, largely range-bound conditions for maybe another six months. Yeah, but the COT is probably saying, you know, the COT might be telling you at this point here, oh, you know, through here somewhere, Oh, by the way, everybody's turned off the dollar. Okay, I can see it in the dollar index chart, and I've anticipated it, but maybe the COT is giving you that affirmation, which makes you feel good. Does this make sense? So it might be the Nike irons make you feel better than Mizuno irons, but they're actually not performing any better. And this, to me, is what the COT is. You can tell just from your direct Forex charts what's going on in terms of people's interpretation because it's reflected in price. Because the COT is simply reporting yesterday's news on what people have done. It's not necessarily projecting them forward. All right. So my long and the short of that is if you like the COT, if you like the commitment of traders report, then brilliant. Use it. I don't think it's any more valuable than what you have right in front of you in present tense. 
Fair enough. Long-winded answer there. There you go. Um, the pre-learning continuation, I haven't. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some of it. I haven't seen a lot of. I haven't seen a lot of great scenarios there, though. I mean, it's just because what do you, you know, it's like, are you going to get 10 pips, 15 pips out of it? You know, let me show you this real quick. I'll pull up a new... And I've shown you guys this before, I think. You know, let me let me put this out to fifty two here. Alright, we'll put this on the euro. So here is the last fifty two weeks of average daily range. Um, average daily range euro volatility. It's a testament to who's the weakest of mirror mirror on the wall. Who's the weakest of them all? Right. This is not something that is strong versus weak. This is just who's weakest today. Okay. So this is why I'm. This is what I'm saying. This isn't conducive to. Good day in and day out spot trading, in my humble opinion. Because you're going to have to be perfect to make 32 pips. That's just not how you want to go. Now, is Euro Aussie better? Yeah, yeah, it's better. You know, that's the one that's making you some money, the, the Asia related pairs. Sure. So, I mean, if that's your thing, then go and concentrate on that a little bit more. You know, here's something that's decent. And th like I said, this can only go out to 52 weeks. But, you know, this is better. That said, it's only 120-odd pips a day, right? Which is still not very much, because if you break that down into sessions, um, if you break it down into sessions here, you know, London, you're still trading at sort of 20 pips an hour. Asia is, you know, 15, 16, and then New York's up there at 30. This isn't directional, this is simply volatility per candle, effectively. Alright, so, you know, what I'm getting at is that things are not, he has Aussie volatility. Alright, 80 pips a day, 90. And I'll show you pound. Forex scale is going, David, I don't know what happened. You need to figure your life out because you are just negative, negative, negative today. need to go see something about that. All right. And he has pounded 100 pips. So to me, normal volatility, euro 140 to 175 um, pound. And I'm putting it, pulling a leg for it. Well, I'm not the, I'm just being, trying to be funny and weird. All right. 180. Euro yen, 170. Pound yen, 200. You know, pound Swiss, 200. And I'm saying this is normal because it might, you know, I've been doing this seven, eight years now. And to me, this is about what I've seen over that period. You know, uh, Aussie yen, 100. Etc. Okay. So, do I think the stock market is a bubble and is going to burst? 
I think it's a bubble that is going to have a correction that is going to be slow and deliberate. I don't think it's going to be a cataclysmic slide because tapering implies exactly that. Free money is going to be in the market for a protracted period of time. I'm still a dollar bull, but I think that um, I'm still a dollar bull, but I think that it's going to be largely in a range for some period here. You know, here's the euro. So here's the euro daily chart. So I'm expecting, um, so I'm expecting sort of something like this. You know, I just don't trade a ton of CAD, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I'm expecting sort of something along these lines. And then, you know, largely very rangy. You know, I'm only putting in, I'm only putting in shorts through, yeah, you know, as much as I can. Oh, sure, I can look at that for you, no worry. Um, how about I give you this link? And I have no affinity, no affinity to this web. Actually, I'm not going to do that out of respect for FX Street. I don't know if they compete at all, but, um, CAD. Here we go. So, and this is the last year, and the last year has been pretty, like, 50 pips a day. 50. And when we, you know, to me, CAD is like, should be up around 120 to 140. Things are just, I mean, what can I, things are just slow right now. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I trade mostly, mostly Euro Yen and Euro Dollar still. Fairly boring, babe. So I guess what I'm saying is Euro is, in my opinion, rangy for a long time to come. All right. Pound, a little more bullish. Euro yen. I think we could test the high, higher highs and then roll the top over. Yeah, can you email me? Guys, I'm also involved in an ag fund right now if you've got any interest in that. Which I'm pretty excited about. So here's my email. Yeah, uh, yep. All right, guys, so I hope that you enjoyed today's webinar. We didn't get a ton of time for, um, ton of time for looking into the future. I'll put some, I'll put some stuff out this evening for, on my Twitter at Forex David, um, in lieu of us missing this time or missing getting to the, getting to the forward stuff. So at Forex David, um, and I'll post a bunch of charts later on and we can have a look at them. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll talk to you soon.